Welcome Classic Rock fans to a, a short and unplanned video. A video in which of course I respond to the Rolling Stone top 500 albums of all time. A few of you have been demanding some sort of response from me on this and I do realise that I'm rather late to the party. In fact there's already quite a few YouTubers already that have uh, spoken candidly about this, uh, this ranking. I'll say now that I'm definitely not going to go through all 500 albums on this list. What I want to do is discuss the list in general and then talk about the top 10 ranking, the top 10 uh, best albums of all time according to Rolling Stone and uh, perhaps consider what my ranking would be. In terms of this list, uh, if you believe that uh, Britney Spears' Blackout deserves to be ranked higher than Jefferson Airplane's Surrealistic Pillow or the Yes album Close to the Edge, or you know if you feel Snoop Doggy's Doggy Style should be ranked higher than the Kinks' Village Green Preservation Society, uh, Rush's Moving Pictures and George Harrison's All Things Must Pass, or indeed Beyonce's Beyonce should be ranked higher than Neil Young's After the Gold Rush, David Bowie's Hunky Dory. But it is worth pointing out, of course, it's a list where Led Zeppelin don't even break the top 40. And Dark Side of the Moon it languishes at a derisory, jaw-dropping number 55. Some people, of course, are saying this list is overtly political, which, you know, might well be the case, or it just may be a list that reflects the demographics of the 300 people that were asked, many of whom uh, for which the music that I love no longer resonates in the contemporary vernacular. Maybe we have to accept that classic rock no longer beavers away amid the collective unconscious of those who've been brought up a more urban music, shall we say. I used to think that the music I was listening to was timeless, but it's quite a bitter pill to swallow to accept that maybe I'm wrong, perhaps one day that this music will cease to have any cultural relevance to a new, whole new generation of music listeners. And I'd be lying if that doesn't sadden me deeply. But time certainly does march on and, you know, maybe one day we'll all meet on the ledge and talk about that fantastic music we used to listen to. So let's look at, uh, according to Rolling Stone, the top 10 albums of all time. Well, number 10 is uh, Lauren Hill's The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Uh, I find it very odd that this should be ranked the 10th best album of all time. I mean, I admit that it's, uh, it's not my cup of tea but I, I've been giving it a good listen to recently in order to prepare some sort of response to it. And I must admit, uh, I was fairly surprised uh, at, at some aspects of it. I mean, it's been described by Pitchfork as a love letter to the liberated self. And I've written down some notes myself about it. I mean, I like the way some of the tones and textures on this album are explored. Uh, there was a wonderful confluence of musical ideas on this. It's a blending of you know classic soul, Motown, uh, do what reggae it's a real mishmash a, a postmodern appropriation of contemporary black music certainly from the the last 50 years or so it has a distinctly retro feel and to quote pitchfork once more it's warm thickly muzzled bass tones and flush distortion of voices is uh, rather interesting but really i have to ask myself is it so good as deserve to be ranked as the 10th best album of all time by Rolling Stone magazine, considering Rolling Stone the last time they did this ranking, this album didn't even break the top 50. But now, of course, it's uh, an album that deserves to be ranked higher, higher than uh, Aretha Franklin, even. But as good and as interesting as this album is, I, I believe it should be ranked a lot lower than 10. So let's look at what else is on there in their top 10 list, shall we? Number nine, they've got Bob Dylan's Blood on the Tracks. I can fully, this is a remarkable album, I can fully understand how it could make somebody's top 10. Uh, uh, I, I don't know whether I'd have this in my top 10 as a, a Dylan album. You know, for me, maybe Blonde on Blonde would uh, supersede this one, but it, it you know, I'd, I could easily see a case being made for this, needing, this album needing to be included. Uh, number eight is Prince and the Revolution. This was an album that I didn't really enjoy when it first came out. It wasn't really uh, what I was interested in listening to at the time. Subsequent listens, however, have revealed a lot more depth, uh, a lot more interesting things going on in terms of the songs, the structures, and, and the sheer musical tour de force that was Prince himself. But as good as it is, uh, I, I don't think it's an album that would make my personal top 10 albums of all time. Perhaps the top 20, but not the not the top 10. Number seven is Fleetwood Mac's Rumours. Uh, now, Fleetwood Mac's Rumours is a, is a classic album, of, of course. Uh, I must admit it's one of those albums that I've just heard too many times that I just cannot bear to play it anymore. But that being said, I thought, about, would, it, would it feature in uh, top, 
the 10 best albums of all time. I mean, it's a matter of debate and discussion, of course, but for me personally, I would have this album ranked around about sort of 25 or certainly in the top 20 possibly, but uh, in the top 10, I, I don't think so. Number six, they've put Nevermind by Nirvana. I'm pretty sure even Nirvana would roll their eyes at this. Uh, it's, it's an incredibly important album. It's probably got the best album cover ever as well, I must say. It's it's one of those game changers, uh, very much like uh, the Sex Pistols' Nevermind the Bollocks. In fact, ironically, the Sex Pistols' album Nevermind the Bollocks actually informs the title of this album. And I love it. I love the melodies and the song structures on it. It's, it's, it's a very impressive album, a very important album as well for its day. I'm not sure it would make my top 10 albums of all time, but it would certainly be very high up on my list. And number five is Beatles Abbey Road. I mean, I can fully see why this deserves to be in the top 10. It's like the, the perfect album in many respects. For many Beatles fans, of course, this album is uh, just a little bit too syrupy. It lacks that uh, Lennon snarl to it. Uh, but nevertheless, it's a tremendous record, which is fully deserving of a place in anybody's top 10. Number four is Stevie Wonder's Songs in the Key of Life. This is a, an incredibly good album. Again, it's one of those that you could argue in terms of its placing, where it should be in anybody's top 10. I think it's fully deserving of a place in the top 10 best albums of all time. I don't think I'd rank it as high as number four though. And number three is Janie Mitchell's Blue. Um, this album is a very important album. The songs are just uh, divine, uh, intricate, beautiful explorations of mood uh, from Joni Mitchell. It's a very important album, very influential album. Um, but again, I, I sort of can't help but feel it's ranked a little bit too high at number three. In Rolling Stone's last ranking, they placed this at number 30. I personally feel that there is a case to be argued for this making the top 10 or just hovering just outside it. It is a, a very, very good album. But uh, I think number three is, again, a little bit too high for this. Number two is Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys. I love this album. It has a hymnal beauty to it, a an exploration of heartbreak that just oozes out of every groove and tone and marimba used on it. I mean, it's certainly a testimony, I think, to the genius of Brian Wilson. Some might say the lunacy of Brian Wilson, perhaps. But it's an album that I, I think it would have to feature in the, the top five albums of all time. And number one, of course, the greatest album of all time, according to Rolling Stone magazine, is Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. This is an incredibly important album. It's a stunning album, in fact. Uh, many argue, of course, for it being a concept album. It's an album, of course, that spoke so eloquently of uh, political malaise and the, the social issues that were affecting a whole generation of uh, people, and in, especially in terms of race relations as well, which was pretty fraught in, in the late 60s. There is a compelling argument to be made for this ranking very high on, on anybody's list of greatest albums of all time. And I think the Rolling Stone originally ranked this at number six. I personally think number six is uh, perhaps a better place for this album. It's fully deserving of its of a top 10 slot, but I don't think I would consider it the greatest album of all time. So if it were me that were compiling a list of the 10 greatest albums of all time, this is what it would look like. Just outside my top 10 would languish Nirvana's Nevermind, probably at 13, Led Zeppelin 4 at 12, and Bowie's Hunky Dory at 11. Now, at number 10, I would perhaps be open to placing Joni Mitchell's Blue. I think that's a better placing for this album. Uh, at number nine, I would perhaps put OK Computer by Radiohead. Uh, number eight would be Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run. Number seven, I would put Stevie Wonder, Songs in the Key of Life. Number six is where I would put Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. Uh, fully deserving its slot in the top 10 best albums of all time. At number five, I've put the Rolling Stones album Exile on Main Street. Number four, I've put Bob Dylan's Blonde on Blonde. Number three, I've put Pet Sounds here. So it's, it's down one from the Rolling Stone ranking. And number two, I've put Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, which uh, just has to feature in anybody's top 10. Number one, this might be a contentious choice, but I've put the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper. Now, I do realise that Sgt. Pepper is not everybody's favourite Beatles album, uh, perhaps not even mine, if, I, if I'm being honest with you. But what it is, it's an incredibly important album. It's a landmark. It's, a, it's an album that demonstrated the possibilities of what an album could be. It, it, it set a new standard. And for the sheer ambition and cultural importance of this album, 
I think it would sit comfortably at the, in number one, uh, the best album of all time. Anyway, that's my, my personal top 10 ranking, how I would rank these albums if it were up to me. Anyway, it just leads me to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, please do click like, subscribe and check that bell to get notified of any future uploads. And if you do appreciate the work I put into these videos, do take some time to check out the links below. Uh, it's, it's always much appreciated. Also, there is the Facebook link uh, down there, which I tend to post stuff on a, a daily basis. So with no further ado, it just leads me to say thank you for watching. Do stay safe. And more importantly, please do keep listening.